Good afternoon. There you go. I told somebody earlier, normally our health sciences group is normally the rally lunch. So, uh, look forward to celebrating with all of you. Students, we have a special treat for you this afternoon. We are thrilled to welcome back one of our own as your commencement speaker. Emily Thomas grew up in Lenore and started her college journey as a student at Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute. After graduating with an Associate in Arts degree from CCC and TI in 2006, Emily went on to receive a bachelor's degree in organizational and public communication from Appalachian State University and a master's degree in communication from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Emily has over 10 years of higher education experience, which started, I might add, as a transition advisor at CCC and TI. Much of her career has been spent in enrollment, advising, and teaching within the communication discipline at two-year and four-year public and private institutions. Emily also worked as an enrollment strategist, helping colleges and universities meet their institutions' enrollment goals. She is currently a policy analyst for Education NC. She travels across the state for NC, engaging with education leaders and students at post-secondary institutions. Her work includes research and reporting on the major trends, issues, and challenges bearing on higher education. In short, she helps tell the community college story across North Carolina. Emily, thank you for carrying the torch and for telling our story. And in addition to her role with EdNC, she also teaches public speaking at CCC and TI. Please join me in welcoming back Miss Emily Thomas. Good afternoon. I am delighted to be with you all today. It is a true honor to speak at the graduation ceremony for the institution that changed the trajectory of my life and to be in the county that will forever be home in my heart. But before I begin, I want to take a moment to say congratulations to you, graduates. We are here today to celebrate your amazing accomplishments. And I do not say amazing lightly. Across the state, less than half of North Carolinians from 25 to 44 complete any higher education. So why am I telling you this? Because what you have accomplished is a big deal. I want you to remember that and I want you to be proud of yourself. Now I'm sure you gathered from my initial comments that I am, as Dr. Fort always likes to remind me, a Caldwell County girl born and raised. I am the product of parents and grandparents who worked hard and spent much of their time earning a living in the furniture factories in this region. Their hard work and dedication helped me become who I am today. Now, when I said that Caldwell County will forever be home in my heart, I meant that. You know, there's something about small towns and rural regions that creates in its people a sense of pride. While they may not have all the amenities of a large urban area, rural regions are made up of residents with deep roots, strong ties, and people who care deeply about the place they call home. And you know what? The people are resilient. When the main industry in this area started to decline about 20 years ago, most of the people here stayed. Some went back to school, some looked for different options. But you know that may very well be one of the strongest assets of rural areas, a well-rooted and committed community. In fact, Caldwell Community College is one of 40 of the state's 58 community colleges that serve at least one rural county. And while the area of Caldwell serves is small in comparison to larger institutions, the impact the college has is just as great. A recent study looked at each of the 58 community colleges in North Carolina to measure the economic impact. What they found is that the entire system has a 19 billion annual economic impact across the state. 
From 2019 to 2020, Caldwell Community College added almost $169 million in income to the region. That supported close to 3,000 jobs. And CCC and TI graduates, you will go on to earn higher wages, increasing your lifetime earning potential. I'll say it again, this institution changes lives. And I know that because it changed mine. So 16 years ago, I was sitting where you are, in those very seats. Well, they just weren't them. In May 2006, I put on a black robe and definitely shoes I had never worn before. And I tried to get that cap to stay on my head. But I almost wasn't in one of those seats. You see, growing up, I didn't know anyone in my family who had graduated from college. Because for most of them, life kind of happened. And furthering their education seemed out of reach. When I graduated from high school, I really felt lost. My gut told me college was a good next step, but I didn't know the first thing about applying for college or filling out financial aid. And because I had a bit of a non-traditional high school experience, there was no counselor to offer advice. And even though I had taken a couple of classes at the college as a newly enrolled student, going to college full-time seemed much scarier. So with a lot of fear and hesitation, I applied to be a full-time college student but I hadn't even submitted my application and was already doubting my decision. I also had to fight the notion that because I was choosing to attend a community college, that my educational journey was not as significant as that of my peers who were attending a four-year college. Before I could actually start classes, though, I had to take a placement test. And I absolutely panicked. I knew I'd probably be okay with the English and reading part, but the math part was a very different story. And what happened was I sat frozen in front of a computer screen and I didn't know any of the math answers. And the results confirmed that. I'd have to take several additional math classes before I could take the one for my degree. And that's when I almost quit something that I hadn't even started. I told myself I wasn't good enough for college, that my math skills were lacking, that my educational journey was not going to look anything like my peers, so why even bother? But for reasons that I will never understand, I did show up that first day of class. And that was hurdle one, showing up. But hurdle two was finishing my degree. Every semester for the first year, I found myself filling out a withdrawal form. I was ready to walk away from college. But you know what? Something would always happen. And it was almost always an instructor who, at the right moment, gave me the nudge I needed to continue. I don't think those instructors ever knew that I was close to quitting. But because they were invested in me as a person, and they really knew me, it made all the difference. After two years, I completed my associate degree. And in May 2006, I was in this very building, sitting in one of those seats, but it wasn't until I sat down that I truly realized what I had accomplished. And for the first time, I was proud of myself. Graduates, I want you to take a moment and reflect on your accomplishments. Congratulate yourself because you're the first in your family to earn a credential. Maybe you can congratulate yourself because you overcame adversities that at one point you thought made going to college impossible. Congratulate yourself because you are completing an education that maybe you started years ago. Or if you're like me, maybe you almost weren't in the very seat you are sitting in now. But guess what? You made it. Regardless of the reason for telling yourself congratulations, you should be proud. You showed up, you put in the effort, and now you have a credential. Now, before I go back here and take this seat, um, I want to leave you with three pieces of advice. And it's advice that I hope that you will take with you as you embark on your next journey, whatever it is. Because I think that's important to remember. It's okay wherever you go next. Number one, speak up. 
Throughout life, you will find yourself in situations with people who have had different experiences. There may be times when you feel as if your background and your experiences are not good enough, or that you don't measure up because your life's path looks different than those around you. But you know what I've come to realize? That there is value in every single journey that everyone takes. It doesn't matter the road that you took to get here. Your experiences, your story, and your voice matter. Speak up. Number two, start and end your day with gratitude. Earlier this year, um, a North Carolina community college president passed away from cancer. I had the privilege of writing an article about his life and legacy. While researching, researching about him, I found several articles that he had published during his time as president. In one of them, he referenced Joni Mitchell's song, Big Yellow Taxi. I'm not going to sing that for you, but I will actually say the lyrics. So the lyrics that he used in the article said, Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? The president said those lyrics were a reminder that we really don't understand the value of what we have until we don't have it anymore. He died soon after that piece was published. Author Anne Lamont said that gratitude is the key to joy. Gratitude or thankfulness is the realization of how much goodness is marbled into our strange and sometimes hard and annoying life. But you know what the great thing is about this habit of gratitude? It's that you can start at any time, even now. I want you to make note of people in this room, graduates, who have helped you and supported you during your educational journey. Your family, friends, the faculty, the staff. And if you're so inclined, you should tell them a thank you. Because I know I plan to do that today. So the last thing, number three, is to offer help. A lot of times we get very focused on our next steps that we forget to look around. Figuratively, that is. And when you don't look, you miss things. You miss things like the beauty of the Blue Ridge Mountains of the North Carolina coastline. But you know what you also miss? You miss the people when you don't look. And when you miss the people, you don't see the opportunities to help. And after all, that is what life is mostly about, helping those around us. So graduates, who are around you right now that you can encourage to take the next step in your educational, in their educational journey? Who can you help navigate this process or even offer advice when they just need someone to say, you've got it, you can do it. Now, I know this speech is for those graduating today, but I do have something to, the, to say to those in this room or online if you're watching with us. If you've thought about furthering or completing your education, this is what I want to say. Don't let fear hold you back. You belong here too and a seat for graduates. If you haven't finished your high school diploma, or you need to learn a new skill, or you want another degree, you can do all of that at this very institution. You know, the great thing about North Carolina Community Colleges is that they were designed for students to enter college regardless of the educational background that a student has. The colleges here meet people where they are and provide them with an education that will transform their lives and the lives of their family. Just as today's graduates have been transformed. I'll close with this. Graduates, I want you to remember, and I really say this, I want you to remember this. What you have accomplished is a big deal. Be proud. I want you to remember to speak up because your voice and your story and your experiences matter. And remember to live with gratitude, even when life is hard, even when life is hard and annoying. And don't forget to look around. Find the people who you can help. Congratulations, graduates. I am so glad that you let me share your day with you. It really is an honor. I'm also glad that you're sitting in their seats. Thank you.